Hi, y'all. Welcome to Source Linker 101. This is a crucial skill for all of your family history endeavors. And so um, I find that sometimes it's a little daunting. It, everything looks a little bit different in every single record. So I just want to take you through one simple record and all of the ins and outs of how it ticks and what features are, are possible here. So let's hop over to an obituary. So whether this is a census, whether it's an obituary, something has been indexed, some record somewhere, and it is pulling into family search and saying, hey, we think it's a match for your family tree. And so source linker is divided into two columns. The left-hand side here is the actual record that has been indexed. Here we see that this is Idaho Southeast County obituaries from 1864 through 2007. And this one is a record for Grant Nelson Beeler. This is my grandpa. So um, on the right hand side is my actual family tree. And so it is saying, we think that this Grant Nelson Beeler is a match for this Grant Nelson Beeler. Please confirm and attach the source. So I, I've got everything collapsed here so that um, we're not getting inundated right off the bat. Um, so here we have Grant Nelson Beeler, uh, born in 1929, died in 2008. And over here, it's a match for those same dates. Now this may differ. Some censuses just asked an age and some ages were guesses. Some ages were off a year because of what date they actually took the census. Um, versus when their birthday was that year. Anyway, so sometimes the dates can be a little off, but here in the obituary, it's going to be pretty much spot on. So um, uh, here we have attached Grant Nelson Beeler to Grant Nelson Beeler, and it turned green. So his wife, Clara White, and over here um, has her full name because that's what's listed in Family Search. Uh, the obituary does not give any ages or birth or death dates here, and so uh, that's why there isn't anything located on the left-hand side versus on the right-hand side, there is a, a birth year and PID number, etc. So what we can do is we can compare and attach this source to Clara. Now there is uh, a few different um, uh, check marks and, and things that you can um, look at here. If you do not want to tag the events or if you only want to tag certain ones, um, we'll get into that in a more advanced video. But for now, I, I just leave all of those the same. And there's no reason to um, <laughs> add a reason. The reason statements are if there is some sort of doubt or um, some hesitation as to why you are um, linking these, if you've went and researched this, and, and did indeed find that this was the same person, but maybe the names were spelled differently, or maybe the dates were weird, but you're certain that it's the right person, um, you're gonna wanna attach a reason explaining why you attach that. Um, here, it, it's, it's a dead ringer, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and attach it, and we don't need to enter any reason to attach the source. All right, so, Next up is the different sections. Here we have the blue section, which is the focus person of the record. And you can change the focus person, but that is, uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. So this is the, the person of record, Grant Nelson Beeler, um, that is actually in the obituary. So let's open up his parents. Here we've already attached them, so they're already green. Um, but we have Leo William Beeler as a match for Leo William, Gladys uh, Nelson Beeler. And so notice here that the names are different, right? Gladys Nelson Beeler. Gladys Nelson is her maiden name. Beeler is her married name. So you'll find that a lot on census records where the, the mother's name or the wife's name may be a married name or a maiden name and uh, maybe even a second marriage name. Um, so that doesn't have to be an exact match in order to attach the record because it is definitely the same person in this case. All right, so let's open up the children. 
So in this obituary uh, lists quite a few children. And um, in my family tree, there's only one or two of them. Michael is deceased. And then my mother, Darlene, is living so that I can see her record. Um, but these other living children aren't going to be listed in my family tree until they're deceased. Um, living records are, are a private domain and, and we don't mess with those. Um, and so uh, family search is basically a tool for the deceased. Uh, you can add in your own immediate family, uh, but beyond that, we, for privacy issues and, and all that shebang, we're going to, to leave uh, living people alone and, and not attach those over quite yet. But for my mother who is living, I can see her name over here. And so I'm going to go ahead and compare. Again, there's no um, reason to uh, explain why I'm attaching her because it is definitely a match. And let's go ahead and close the children. And then let's open up the sibling. So in an obituary, it's going to list many of the siblings and children and everybody that's related to this person. And again, here we can see all of the deceased, but we cannot see the living. And so we won't add in Yvonne quite yet, but we uh, have attached the, the rest. Now, if you've made a mistake, that's totally fine. You can detach at any point. And this one, you would want to add a reason why you're detaching it. Um, uh, if you just got going too fast or uh, you had made a guess, but it wasn't right and you need to reverse it, you'd explain why you are detaching the source. And then when you go to reattach, uh, that would be a good uh, time to explain a, a reattachment. Um, let's close this one. And then here is the other category. This is very handy for census records because many censuses have other relations in them. Um, in an obituary, we have many different people listed here. Um, so let's go and explain some of these. So Terry Briggs is my father. And so he is married to my mother, Darlene, right here. And um, so we can attach him up here. But if we drag his name up here and try to um, attach it to Darlene, it's going to throw things off and it's going to try to connect Terry to Darlene as if they're the same person. So what we're going to want to do is drag him back down to the other category. And then we can change the focus person. So this isn't changing the obituary or messing anything up. But what we want to do is put Darlene here as the person of interest so that we can attach her family members that aren't necessarily um, directly involved in, in Grant's uh, line. So in-laws, nieces and nephews, all of that um, are, are going to need to change a focus person. So let's switch it over to Darlene Briggs. And you'll see that now she is in the blue box and it bumps Grant and Clara up into the parent category. And um, now all of her siblings are listed here. Now you can see that my dad is now in that spot because I can see him because he's a living individual and I'm directly related. Um, so now I can drag his name up in here and compare. And there you go. So some of these others are spouses of other living children of Grant. And so I'm not going to do anything with those at this point. Um, but you can see here we have a, a bishop listed. He is not related to the family in any way. And so uh, we don't need to attach him. Um, and we don't need to attach any living people that aren't immediate family. So a couple other things that we want to look at is the record and the image button. The record button is very handy. We use it all the time in, uh, in deciphering source linker. Sometimes you pull up source linker and it has everybody kind of mixed up and uh, you're not quite sure who's who and who's related exactly, uh, especially if it's not your own family and you're not familiar with the family relations. So in here, 
uh, we can see typed out what was indexed from this image up here. And so we can see that Grant Nelson is listed as a father and that he's male. Clara is listed as the mother and female and uh, et cetera. So in his obituary, it, you know, he's not listed as the father or head of the household kind of thing. So let's change the focus person and see how this affects this record. So if we change it back to Grant, here so that he is in the, the blue highlighted section and click on record again, we'll notice that his um, title has changed. So all of these are different. Now we have the spouse and children category, parents and siblings category, extended family, and the others on the record. <clears throat> and he is listed up here as the, the principal person. So let's change it over to Leo, his father, for example, and look at the record again. Now we see that it's uh, changed back, but the, the title for Grant is now changed to son because it's whoever's in the highlighted blue is the focus person and all of the titles pertain to that person. So everything will change based upon relationships. That's what can get very confusing about Source Linker really quickly if you are um, kind of in the thick of it. So um, I encourage you to, to go and find um, someone in your immediate family or someone that you know pretty well, the, the family relationships and the dynamics, and play around with it. Um, you may find one that's, that's already attached, everything's already green, or maybe it's all white, um, but just go and start changing the focus person around and experimenting. Uh, you can't mess anything up. You can always detach if you hit the wrong button or, or whatever, um, but change the focus person on the left-hand side. Experiment with it before you start uh, trying to change the focus person on the right-hand side. That's gonna be for a future video. Um, and uh, a whole new shebang there. <laughs> so another thing that we can look at is the image. Let's go to the actual obituary and see what was indexed. So maybe the indexer made a typo or um, just a strange name, or uh, maybe the uh, gender was unknown. And so you wanna come in here and um, just look at the, your actual image, zoom in and, and read it. Uh, this is very handy for, for censuses, uh, many times that there's a, a grandchild listed in the census and you're trying to figure out which child it, uh, uh, who was the parent of that grandchild in, in the home, et cetera. There, there's many different things to all explain in one video. But here we can see uh, who the original children are and then the spouses are in parentheses and that helps to differentiate uh, relationships here. But as, as people are indexing, sometimes there's some mistakes. And so sometimes you need to go to the actual record and, and be able to, to look at those. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. But this is Source Linker 101. Uh, we're going to dive into some, some heavier examples and, and strange circumstances and when things look weird and, and off in, in future videos. But um, this is, Again, one of the most crucial skills to family history that, that is imperative that, that you learn and, and get familiar with and comfortable with so that you can attach records in your family, in census projects, and uh, help build God's tree all over the place. Anyway, have a great day.